The siege of Megalopolis was a siege battle during the Second War of the Diadochi between Polypachon, the regent of the Macedonian Empire, and the people of Megalopolis who supported Polypachon's rival Cassander. The siege failed and Polypachon lost a lot of prestige, which was capitalized on by Cassander and his ally Antigonus. Chapter 1 Background After the death of Alexander the Great in 323 BC, his generals immediately began squabbling over his huge empire. Soon it degenerated into open warfare, with each general attempting to claim a portion of Alexander's vast empire for himself. These wars were called the Wars of the Diadochi and would last for decades. At the end of the First War, at the partition of the empire at Triparadisos, Antipater had been made regent of the empire, he would represent the kings, Philip III and Alexander IV. Antipater died in 319 BC, but just before he died he had nominated Polypachon to be his replacement as regent. Antipater's son Cassander, enraged at not having been made his father's successor, soon fell out with Polypachon, fled to Asia Minor and got the backing of Antigonus Monophthalmus, the strategus of Asia. Cassander also had a lot of support in Greece, through the Macedonian garrison commanders and the Greek tyrants and oligarchs placed in control of the Greek city-states by his father. Polypachon decided to go to Greece himself and try and weaken Cassander's position. Chapter 2 Prelude Polypachon first marched on Athens, where he tried to get control of the fortress of Munychia and the harbour of Pyrrhos. In this he was thwarted by Nicanor, the commander of the Macedonian garrison, and Cassander, who had just arrived with reinforcements from Asia Minor. A long siege was inevitable. Polypachon left the siege of Munychia and Pyrrhos to a subordinate, and marched his main army into the Peloponnese. Although most cities on the Peloponnese had sided with him, the influential city of Megalopolis had sided with Cassander. Chapter 3 The Siege At that time Megalopolis was ruled by an oligarchy under Damis. Damis did not recognize Polypachon as the new regent and had joined Cassander's coalition. When Polypachon arrived at Megalopolis he established two camps in front of the city, one for his Macedonian troops, one for his allies. He had wooden siege towers constructed and had his engineers dig tunnels under the walls to bring them down. Eventually, three towers and part of the wall came down. Polypachon then ordered his men to attack the city through the breaches. The defenders were able to hold the breaches, and after a lot of hard fighting, the attackers withdrew with heavy losses. During the night, the defenders built stockades in the breaches and stationed archers and catapults on them. To keep the enemy at bay. Polypachon's casualties rose and he decided to use extreme measures, by sending his war elephants against the stockades. Damis must have had some intelligence on this because during the night he had iron spikes, hooks and nails attached to the stockades. The next day, when Polypachon's elephant assault began, Damis had his men retreat from the stockades and had them fire their bows and catapults from the adjacent walls. When the elephants reached the stockades they tried to rip them down, but because of the spikes, hooks and nails they hurt their trunks panicked and fled. The elephant stampede caused further casualties and took the fight from Polypachon's army. After a few weeks Polypachon ended the siege and marched back to Athens. Chapter 4 Aftermath The failed siege of Megalopolis damaged Polypachon's reputation and several Greek cities went over to Cassander. Their cause strengthened because Cassander and Antigonus went on the offensive. Antigonus defeated Polypachon's fleet at Byzantium. Eventually Cassander was able to drive Polypachon from Macedon, and became the dominant power in the European part of the Macedonian Empire. Polypachon was reduced to a minor contender in the wars of the Diadochi.